All right. So good evening, good afternoon, good night for uh, everybody out there in ATM land. This is Phil from the ATM Mastermind group page. Uh, we go live every other Monday at 6 central time. Um, today we're talking about, you know, what can you outsource in your ATM business? Um, a lot of times I get people that, you know, they're working on, um, they're working a nine to five. They don't have a lot of time. They're trying to look the way to see, Hey, how can I make extra money? We suggest the ATM business. They say that's great, but they don't have a lot of time to do most of the activities in the ATM business or part of the ATM or activities in the ATM business. They also, maybe they're just not good at some of the uh, activities in the ATM business. Um, i feel what I've been doing it for 23 years that most of the ATM activities are fairly easy doesn't take a, a lot of skill set in most of the areas but um, for somebody who hasn't been around um, the business you know what I guess it, it can be a little challenging so we want to talk about today about um, what can I outsource hey Phil I, I love what you're talking about the ATM business there's certain things that I'm challenged with about it. Um, and you know, how do I overcome those challenges? So, um, that's what we're going to talk about today and to give you guys some ideas. Hey, I liked it either for people who are thinking about the ATM business. I like most of what you're saying, Phil, there are some things I don't like doing. What can I do to, uh, make it a little easier on myself? And I relate this to, to real estate. I, um, I wanted to get more involved in real estate. I took a class to understand Hey, how do I do real estate? Whether it was uh, fix, fit, uh, fix and flips, or buying commercial buildings, or doing, um, or just do, trying maybe do wholesaling, or anything and anything. I, I got into. I, I bought a class. I figured out. I got into community, and I wanted to understand a little bit about the uh, real estate business um, because I didn't want to make a, a lot of mistakes. I'm not. Uh, even though I'm, I would say I'm pretty much um, handy when it comes to the ATM business, but we're talking about apples and oranges. I didn't know how to, you know, take down a wall. I could take down a wall, but I didn't know how to put up a wall. I didn't know anything about electricity or plumbing, um, in those kind. I know low voltage, but I don't know, uh, 110 or an, anything of that nature. Plus you need a license here in Illinois to mess around with electricity and or plumbing or HVAC. So, uh, we, we ended up doing a fix and flip on this, uh, on this, uh, I got with a realtor. They had their own contractor. They brought me into the picture. Um, they, we went through multiple, uh, properties until we found the right one. And then we, we gutted the whole thing and we, we turned around and we, uh, uh, fixed it up and, uh, end up flipping the property. But it all started from me. How did I do it? I took a course and then the course gave me to the realtor and to the contractor and then we did our uh, my first fix and flip, but there was things of that that I didn't I didn't know how to do a lot of the ins and outs of the fix and flip for um, for the for the real estate. Now did I take the class? Yep, but didn't give me I, I didn't know a lot of stuff. So during the course, I learned not only taking the class what the right numbers were, the right deal, what am I looking for, what am I not, what, how I don't want to get in trouble, and then I relied on my coach or uh, the realtor and then the, the coach of, of who was teaching a class, how to, how do you do this, how to avoid mistakes and what, uh, and what, am, what's my strengths and what was uh, my weakness. My strength was I had a checkbook. That was my biggest strength and I could write a check. That was the number one thing I could do. Um, everything else I was learning as I was going, but I want to relate that, that whole experience because I know a lot of times what you guys are out there, you're facing with, okay, I liked it. I like what you're saying, Phil, about the ATM business. Same with me with real estate. I liked the fact that I was going to buy a piece of property. It was, it, it needed to be renovated. I liked the fact that I was kind of helping out the community in, um, it, I was doing it in Chicago. And I liked the fact that we were taking an old building that wasn't inhabitable, putting it back together and providing a nice place for somebody to live. Um, I liked that. So I was helping out the community. I, I was, you know, hopefully I was going to make money. That's why I took the course to learn how to make money. And then when we got done, we were hoping that, you know what, everything went right and according to plan. And 
uh, we were able to sell it for for uh, profit. So that was the goal when I did that, but I learned the process throughout the way. So here we are, you know, um, with the ATM business and we had the same, it's the same situation. And the reason I tell that story is because I'm more, I was in the same situation as you. I didn't know exactly what I was doing or how to do things. And I relayed on, I relied on a few people to help me through the process. And that's what we're going to, that's what we, what I try to do with a lot of the students and other people who are not students in the ATM business. Hey, Phil, how can you help me in this situation? I'm not so strong in these um, arenas. So, all right. So, uh, so here's, here's what we're going to talk about. One of the, one of the things in the ATM business is the only, number one way that you can be in the ATM business and be successful is you have to find continuing, find new locations, new locations, new locations. There is no other way to be successful that I know. And I've been in for a little, almost 24 years now is to, is to find new locations. So how do I do that? And what, what we did in the beginning is I was, I used my customer relationship skills with other businesses to perpetuate my, myself into the ATM business, but that only goes so far. Okay, great. Then what do I do? How do I get locations? So I went, uh, I started going around from uh, door to door, looking at different locations. Do they have an ATM? Do they not have an ATM? Um, and we did that. We were successful at that. But here's the challenge is how much time do you have? Um, if you're working a nine to five, you only have a limited amount of time. You got in an ATM business to generate extra revenue, but now you don't necessarily have that all this time you you have a you have you got an ATM business. What I see over and over again is these the people get in an ATM business. They got their two to three locations. They know somebody. They know a barber or a convenience store or a gas station or um, a grocery store. And they said they asked to put it in. The store owner says yes. They had that relationship already, and they put that in. Maybe they're lucky, fortunate enough to have two or three locations. They buy the ATMs for us. They put it in. But what happens is now. They say, okay, great. I'm, I'm in the ATM business, but now they have to go out and find some more locations. Maybe one of those locations uh, close up so or their friend sells the business and now they don't have that relation, uh, that relationship. So they have to go out and get create new locations. So that what do you do? Well, you what I talk about all the time, you got to create a network of people that are going to be out there uh, helping you find locations. That's what we did. I, I had other, I had what I call finders. I went out and, and now that's different. This is my phrase is a finder is somebody that I create and I created them to find me locations, a locator, is somebody I pay that already knows what they're doing to find locations. So, um, what, how do we find locations is this is, this is another avenue to do that. Now I can tell you uh, what's a, a finder. I create them. It's very inexpensive. It's somebody that already was in the location, um, a beer distributor or a liquor salesman or somebody that sells a product to the locations that I'm looking to place ATMs at, whether it's convenience stores or laundromats or gas stations, whatever they're selling to those locations. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I figure out how to motivate those people and then they find me locations because they're already in those spaces. I pay them a, a let's call it a stipend or a, a low commission and then uh, they continue to bring me locations. Now, I don't share any of the revenue with them because that's disastrous in the ATM business. I just give them uh, a one and done and I pay them the money. Now, what's a what's a locator? A locator who, that's what they do for a living. They find you locations. They know what they're doing. They, they cold call a bunch of locations. They create the traffic and they give you a lead. Now, most of the time, um, those leads are good. Sometimes they're not because these people don't know what the location actually looks like. So what they do is they uh, will cold call. They'll set you an appointment. They'll give you the lead. You close the deal. They're not going to close the deal for you. If they close the deal for you, then it's a little bit more. Can they do that? Yes. Um, the locators that we work with, to be honest with you, I don't want them closing a the deal. They don't. They are not trying to close the deal the way I want to close the deal. The way we close the deal is I get a contract signed. That's the way I close the deal. The way a locator gets some of the locators I've seen out there, they just want you to place your ATM. They don't care about the contract. They don't care about the deal. They don't care if you make money or you don't. All they care about is placing your ATM into that location. So 
um, you got to be careful of that. And the other thing is you get a locator. What you want to do is you want to make sure that, and I tell you guys this all the time, make sure that the location is, um, is you don't pay the guy for the location lead and, and not to secure your ATM. What does that mean? Look, you get the lead, you, they sign the contract, you're ready to go. And something happens between the time you sign a contract and you place your ATM. You already paid the locator the money. They did their job. You didn't do your job for whatever reason. Now you're out your money and you're going back to the locator and say, hey, I didn't close that deal. Do they believe you? I don't know. Do they trust you? Maybe, maybe not. But now you're you're out the money that you paid. Make sure that when you do these deals, make sure that your ATM is bolted to the floor and then pay the person. Um, and if the location turns out to be a great location, you want to keep that person around so they can find you more locations. Most of the time, I see this all the time where a locator says, okay, great. We got you one. Let's get you one. Let's get you two, three, four, five locations. And what happens is you're just not ready to move financially ready to move that fast. So they'll find you one, they'll find you two, and then you have to pull back a little to, um, see, hey, evaluate these locations. How are how's it going? What's is this going to be a viable location for me, or do I have to wait um, till I'm financially secure to get the next one? And so the locator, keep in mind, the way they make money is by getting deals for you. So they need a lot of deals on a table between you and other people to find, um, so they can make their money. So, bottom line is. If you can't find locations or you're challenged by lo by finding new locations for whatever reason, you know what? Find a locator. They'll help you find the location. Um, what we do, and just to let you guys know, we I, I've started working with a guy. I've been working with them for almost a year. They find us locations. I try to give them, they find our students locations to, to so they can be prosperous in the ATM business. Um, I had a, you know, uh, I had a location. I had a student who was in the ATM business. They had one locations. They were looking at getting more. And what we we um, we uh, called the locate. He said, "Find me some locations." I can't. He had a, when he got into the business. He had all these. He had a locator all lined up. I told him he needed a locator. He said, "No problem. I got a guy. He's going to go out bird dog for me and find me locations." So now he finds. He said he's going to find him locations. Well, what happened is the guy end up. Um, hurting himself and he was out of commission. So he couldn't find a location. The guy who we went with was a student. He was not the guy who was going to go out on the street. His whole business was going to be outsourced in every way, shape or shape or form in the ATM business. Um, so he said, Hey, I can't, I need a new location. I got to find somebody. I said, look, I said, we'll, we'll look for you. So then after about two weeks, the locator found him location, and in two weeks' time, he said, "You know what, Phil? I'm gonna I'm gonna rethink um, this." He said, "I got some other opportunities, and I'm just gonna I'm just not gonna go forward with that location." So now I had, in a in a strange city, I had uh, two locations, and it turned turned to be um, a, a good location. But now the locator find me a location. So what did I do? I I contacted a guy that I knew that was in that city, and I said, "You know what?" Would you be interested in vaulting for me? And he said, sure, I'll, I'll help you out. So it worked out good. We got the location, paid the locator. Uh, the guy that I know, he he said that he would vault the location for me. Um, and you know what? Uh, the customer's happy who we found the ATM. The vaulter's happy because we or the vaulter's happy. He's making money. Uh, we're making money. And um, the locator's happy. He, he found two locations for us and he's making money. So everybody won in that situation. But sometimes you got to be careful just to make sure that you're doing the right thing and you don't want to take a location on and then tell the, the people, hey, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't take that location. So make sure that you can fulfill the locator's needs also if you're gonna if you're gonna do this. All right. Um, second thing I want to talk about is oh, and then you know, Phil, you could say, hey, what's how much of you know, here's a question I get asked, Phil, what should I pay for a locator? That's going to be on a per, it's going to be a per location deal. And it's going to be on a per, what type of location. So uh, anywhere right now, I see locators getting anywhere from $300 to $1,000, depending on the location, uh, depending on um, the type of location it is. So, and it depends on the city. So 
just keep in mind that's what it, that's what a locator is going to cost you. Now you might say, well, geez, that's you know what, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but then you got to think, how much is your time worth? Is your time worth um, going out and talking to every store owner and only to get, hey, I uh, I already have an ATM, or do you have somebody doing that and now you're basically getting uh, really warm leads? Is what I would say is because now you're going to go there. They already know that they're, you're here to put an ATM in there. All you have to do is 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 do your little selling right there and say, hey, um, we we our our guy called and you you had some information you wanted you were looking at maybe place an ATM in your business and then go through your sales process from there. All right. So that's the, that is what we call the locator or the finders. Um, second thing we want to talk about is insulation. All right. So insulation is very, in my opinion, it's very simple. Um, I would say probably 85% of the businesses have cement floor. You're talking about a hammer drill, four anchors, and away you go. You're good. Most of the ATMs or most of the people in the ATM business will do a wireless connection. So they don't, they do so they put a cellular signal in an ATM. When they had that cell signal in the ATM, um, they don't have to connect it to the internet. I know some guys uh, they use they hardwired it to to the location. Other guys use cellular device. So either one, there is another option, a wireless option that connects to the store's internet. I don't. I'm not a big fan of that, just for the simple fact that if the store owner changes the internet, you might not know why. Uh, your ATM isn't connecting and it's because they changed their internet. And sometimes things interfere with those wireless um, signals between it's like a point to point. So I'm not a big fan of it. I know some guys do use it um, and they're happy with it. It was not something that I would do too many variables, especially when you're starting out in ATM business. Those that's, that is for a seasoned veteran um, for somebody who's starting out it, it creates a nightmare because they don't know if their ATM isn't working because of the cell or because of the signal um, of the wireless or something else. So they don't know. This way we eliminated all those, those uh, challenges. All right. So now you go to install. Basically, all you're doing when you do your installation is you're bolting it to the floor. Some people, th the reason they would outsource this is because, A, they don't have a way to, to get their ATM from point A to point B. So let's say if you bought an ATM from us, we're going to ship it directly to the location um, or we're going to ship it directly to you. And then from there, what you'll do is you'll take it to the location. Some people that we contact that we're that are students of ours or partners with ours, they don't have trucks. They're just starting out. They got a They got a car and they don't. They said, Phil, I don't there's no way for me to get the ATM from my house or my garage to uh, the ATM location. So I said, it's not a problem. We can drop ship the ATM right into your customer's business, but you will sh you should be there to pick up the ATM or not pick it up, but uh, receive the ATM when the truck's there and make sure you get a, they you get it into the place with the, with the business owner and then unbox that ATM um, and then uh, come back and either install it that that same day or install it maybe the next day which means just bolt it to the floor um, when we ship an atm to you it is pretty much plug and play uh, some guys do not shoot ship it plug and play they're gonna ship it to you you're gonna have to program it you're gonna have to install the wireless device you're gonna have to worry about the communication we do all that for you to basically outsource it for you to make it a one-stop shop but um, if you don't do it that way you will have to program the atm you have to install the wireless you have to do the communication um, for that, uh, and then you have to bolt it down. So uh, there are companies that will do it. We can use a third party to facilitate for you. It's usually about, depending on where you are from a major city, it's usually going rates anywhere from uh, $300 to $500, depending on where you're at in the country and how far you are from a hub uh to do that process. But just to keep in mind, you can have it outsourced, but that's about what the going rate for them to bolt it down and program it. And it doesn't really matter if they just, if they just bolt it down or they just be, or, or they bolt it down programming, you would think it's more, but in reality, they are, they're just billing for the time it takes to get from the hub to you and they bill it on a per call basis. So you're really not saving anything, but it can be done. So if you don't want to, bolt it down, uh, then you can do that. 
My suggestion is not to hire a professional company to bolt it down, but maybe to hire a handyman um, to bolt it down. Uh, that usually works pretty good. Handyman probably run you about anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks just to bolt it down. You can watch them do it once and then you could do it yourself. Or you just, you hire them every time. You say, hey, I'm going to get this ATM. Let's let's do it that way. So you hire your own, um, let's call it a handyman or your own service that will break, will install the ATM. It's similar to, you know, when I was building, when we were doing the house, I got different prices. Okay. The guy, the contractor said, this is my guy for um, the electrician. This is my guy for the painter. This is my guy. I'm like, okay, well, let's get prices on this. And I'm just not going to go with anybody. I want to, he's like, well, that's my guy. And I trust him. I said, that's great. But here's what I want to do. Tell your guy to give me a price. I want to know what the price is to slap the paint on the wall. A lot of times, and this is my story for real estate. I was doing, um, we were building our own house and I got a price for uh, the painters to come in. And it was back in the day, it was, it was like $3,000 to come in and paint what I thought was my house. Okay. So they gave me a price of 3000 and then I, and I said, okay, you guys are great. I'm going to go with you. And then I, I, I got the bill and uh, I said, the, what, three, this is 5,000. Oh yeah. It's 3000 for the paint and $2,000 for us to put it on. I'm like, well, everybody else was 5,000 or it was 4,000. And I got bamboozled on that deal because they, I didn't know that it, it was, <laughs> I know this sounds silly. I thought the 3,000 was to paint the house. No, no, that's just to buy the paint. Then we got labor to put the paint on the house. All right. So another lesson learned when you, when you get into construction. So when you're doing uh ATM business, you know what, if you're going to get a handyman to help you and you don't know how to uh, use a hammer drill or, uh, drill into cement. It, it's not really that hard to be honest with you, but you, you watch a guy do it once or somebody do it. You'll either make a decision. Do I want to hire this guy or do, do I want to do it myself? And how much is it worth? So let's say you hired a guy, he does it. Now, you know, okay, you got to buy the sleeves. You got to buy the anchors or he buys them. You give him the money and then he drills the floor. Um, the whole process should probably only take about 25 minutes to really do four holes and bolt it down. But so that's so you know what you're paying for. All right. Um, and then we're going to talk about vault cash servicing and about vault cash and servicing. OK, Phil, what's that? That's where, hey, you own your own ATM, but you have somebody else put their money into your ATM and you give them uh, a piece of surcharge. So let's say you're on a three dollar surcharge. You're going to charge that to the customer. Let's say you give a uh, 50 cents to the location or so now you got two dollars and 50 cents to work with. Well. A vault cash company usually right now is running, depending on transaction volume and where they're at, anywhere from uh, 75 cents to $1.25 is what the going rate is for a guy to um, do that. Uh, in the situations that, that we did, I used to vault cash for uh, operators. Um, it depends. Uh, we were doing a, a lot of transactions for an operator. They were paying us 75 cents to be, to, to be vaulted. Okay, so that's what I was getting per transaction. Um, right now, I, I got we got a couple of locations. I'm paying a guy a uh, dollar twenty five, but the guy's an outstanding guy. So you know what? I pay a little bit more, but I get good service. Um, I was paid a little less, but I was given great service. But um, but we did high volume, and they they were in a concentrated area right in my uh, wheelhouse. So. Um, it just depends on what you're going to do, but I would say anywhere from a 75 cents to a dollar 25 is what you're going to be paying for uh vaulting service. Now, the good thing with that is, is if there's a service call, the guy who's vaulting it, they go and they go and fix, fix the problem. You got a paper jam, you got a, um, you got a, uh, a, a bill jam. They're going to go out there and uh, fix the problem. And majority of the time, if there's a service call, the owner of the store is not going to call you. They're going to call them. So they take a little bit of the service calls off you. They take a, they take the, the vaulting off you, and it makes it a turnkey operation. Do I recommend that for every location? I do not. Some Sometimes, you know what, you want to make a little bit more, and you're in the ATM business. But sometimes what happens, you get an opportunity that's outside of your network, uh, outside of your travel time, you know what? It makes more sense to vault the location 
to either you're going to make a decision. Am I going to take this location? Am I going to be profitable if somebody else handles the service on it? And if the answer is yes, then take the deal. If the answer is no, then don't take the deal. All right. And then uh, our last thing, and then we're going to go over to the student section uh, with our, um, in our, we have a, a mastermind section for the students and uh, some of the people that are in our network. Um, we're going to go over there and we're going to go over some of this in a little more detail. All right. So we also got cutting checks and uh, monitoring a service. All right. So some of you guys who are out there in ATM land, um, your, your ISO, that's like a guy like me, they don't give you capabilities to monitor your ATMs. So you don't know if your ATM goes down or not. Um, they don't give you the ability to uh, do ACHs or not. So you're, you're stuck. Hey, you're, you're, you can see the ATM, but you don't know if it went down or not. The only way you know is if it's been doing, hasn't done a transaction. So uh, my suggestion for you guys is talk to your ISO, let, give them, ask them to get more permissions so you can see, get alerts on your page. If, is the ATM down? Is it not down? Is the ATM uh, doing transactions or not? And then give, ask them for an ability to ACH your customers. So that way, um, you don't have to cut checks. I'm a big proponent, not cutting checks. Uh, I want to email my customers a statement every month and I want to get and I want to get the money into their hands so I don't have to cut checks. Checks is a nightmare, um, especially when you got hundreds of ATMs, you got to write hundreds of checks. It's just a pain in the butt to do that every month. Um, I would rather do it automatically and then you don't have to worry about that. But so um, I hope that was helpful tonight. I just want to let you guys know. Uh, thank you guys very much. Um, we have, a, we have a, a private community that uh, we're migrating to called uh, Mighty Networks. Um, we're going to have the link uh, in the description on all our, all our videos, and it'll be down below. Not right now, but it will be. Um, it will be. Uh, and when we edit the video, it'll be there in a few days. So if you want to go back on YouTube, um, we'll put the link in the description. Um, and uh, it is, I see sometimes we got questions. Let me see. I'm going to go to question section. Uh, if we got any questions, uh, I don't see any questions. <clears throat> All right. Um, if this was helpful, please put um, some fire emojis in the chat. That would be great. Um, and then other than that, I will see you guys in two weeks um, at six o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. Also remember that we have an ATM A to Z course that teaches you from A to Z how to be successful in the ATM business. Uh, we also sell ATMs. So if you guys need an ATM, we, we're here to help and we sell them. And we offer free processing uh, and parts for you guys who are already in the ATM business. We offer that. So until next time, thank you guys very much. I'll see you in two weeks. Uh, and as my friend would say, that's it. That's all, says the clock on a wall. See you guys next time. Thank you very much.